You probably saw that new consumer report about high levels of lead in protein powder, should you freak out about it. There's so much nuance on this topic, which you all hate, but I'm gonna try and sum up the main points in a way that is actionable for your real life. First of all, this is not new information. They put out reports like this on the regular. We already knew that heavy metals in protein powders is a problem, especially vegan protein powders. Second of all, the lead threshold that consumer reports used is the California Prop 65 threshold for reproductive harm, which is basically the most stringent threshold that there is. Now, when we're talking about something like lead, where we know that no amount is safe, especially for kids or pregnant people, I don't want to dismiss these levels no matter how small they are. But when you read reports like this, I do think it is important to keep in mind that the thresholds that they are using are low. Now, how does this apply to your daily life? One, I always recommend that what you do on a regular basis is more important than what you do every once in a while. So if you're someone who drinks protein powders, shakes, bars, day after day, year after year, then I would say this information is more of a concern for you than someone who just eats protein powder supplements every once in a while. If you're consuming protein supplements on a regular basis, I would suggest putting in the time, energy, money to find a cleaner brand. Two, if you're taking protein supplements, try to get it from a variety of protein sources. Plant-based protein is known to have higher levels of heavy metal contamination because the heavy metals are in the soil and then the plants draw them up into the crop. And then even within vegan protein powder sources, some plants draw more heavy metals than others. So by mixing it up, you can reduce the likelihood that you're going to get a high level of any one particular contaminant. So if you can do pea and hemp and whey if you're if you're not vegan and you can tolerate it that's usually going to be a better approach but three even better than that try to get your protein from a real food not only is real food going to have a lower concentration of toxicants but it also comes with all the vitamins nutrients antioxidants that can reduce absorption of toxic chemicals and counterbalance the negative effects of toxic chemicals the fourth thing is to look for brands that actually test their products regularly and even better has some sort of third-party accountability involved the clean label project for example is one that i like to use when it comes specific to supplements and vitamins. But to be honest, what really needs to happen in the long term is that we need to decrease industrial pollution because that's where most of the heavy metals are coming from that end up in our soil and then our food. And it's just getting worse over time. I'm probably going to put together an in-depth protein guide in the near future. So let me know if there are any specific brands you want me to look into for that.